Hey everyone. Um, so today I'm going to machine one side of this screw. Um, so it's just a screw out of a hydraulic jack. It lets the it releases the pressure, I guess, uh, when you want the jack to go down, like a floor jack. Uh, yesterday I ran one, and it went really, really good. Um, so I thought I'd make a video, just sort of explain the tooling I'm using. All of this is transferable to manual, um, if you're into manual machining. And uh, if you were sort of interested in CNC, this give you an idea of the process. Uh, I'm going to fire up the machine, and uh, yeah, we'll talk more as it's running. Okay, so for facing and OD turning, I'm just using uh, a braced on carbide tool. So um, here's a shot of it. Um, it's from Busy Bee. They're like $6.99, if I remember correctly, and uh, they're really good. Um, yeah, I've been using them for a lot of stuff because setting up this little CNC machine, I've had a bunch of crashes, and it's nice to just throw the tool in the garbage and grab another. Um, yeah, for this I didn't uh, bother uh, using G96, which is a code that calls up constant surface speed. If it was active, the spindle speed would be varying up and down as it got closer towards the center. Um, I didn't think it was super important because this is brass. It's a pretty low stress machining operation, so uh, I just decided to set a spindle speed and go with it. It's a finishing pass. Now it's going to do two. No, it's not tool changing. Still got to turn the OD. Two ODs. Um, I can show you what's going on with the controller here. So CNC uses G code. Um, you can either write it sort of just from memory and using a little bit of math. There's X and Z coordinates only on the lathes. Um, Z is what the direction it's feeding now, that way. And uh, X is that way. Um, I use the wizards in Mach 3. You can see there's a little tab up at the top that says wizards. It won't focus very well on that, but uh, with the wizards in Mach 3, all you have to do is sort of pick the basic shape and machining operation, enter the data, and it writes all the G code for you. Um, Mach 3 is a really inexpensive program, but it, it does an awesome job of conversational programming. Or some sort of conversational. It just, uh, I guess it's still running G code to execute all the operations. But uh, so I go ahead and do the wizards, I post the G code, and then I cut and paste them all into one big program. Um, and I have to add in tool changes and stuff like that. Yeah, I'll zoom out a little or walk back a little <laughs> so you can see the whole machine. Um, the tool changer on it is automatic, which uh, is super handy. This is like the big selling feature. I really didn't think that they made like small at-home machines with automatic tool changer. Sort of means it could, in theory, run unattended if you had, uh, well, a part just like this that was low impact on tools and a program you could trust. So now we're going to be doing some grooving. Um, the grooving tool is also from Busy Bee. It's just their part off blade. Um, it was pretty inexpensive too. It was like probably about $50. I don't exactly remember. Um, you can see it's a high speed steel blade. 
in a holder and you can see I ground the front down maybe you can see that I found the height was way too high um, it was way above my center line like a hundred and thirty thou so instead of taking a hundred and thirty thou of my tool holder which would have weakened it I took it off of the blade itself and that sort of allowed me to give it a unique geometry, flatten the top out. I, uh, when I had a manual machine, I used to use the Sandvik hard off blade with like a little replaceable carbide insert. And it's good, but it is really delicate and it really doesn't take an interrupted cut well at all. Um, and also any sort of mistake, like if you ran it into the part, it would be done. I have run this high-speed steel one into the part once and it seemed to do okay. There, which means I've got my tool offset wrong. What I'm going to do, I've put it in single block. Um, I'm going to adjust that tool offset and rerun the grooving, and then I'll resume the video. Okay, so I'm back. Um, all I did was measure the diameter I had and adjust my tool wear offset. Um, and now we're back machining. Um, yeah, I don't know what went wrong with my touching off of the part, but uh, that tool wasn't touched off right. Um, trying to think what else I can tell you is... Yeah, um, with parting off, I guess I can talk a little bit about parting off. If you're new to turning on a lathe, um, parting off can be sort of frustrating. We're not really parting off in this case, we're grooving. But uh, as you get closer to the center with the part off blade, it's super important that you are on center. Um, even a difference of 20 thou is going to make a big deal. Um, you need to be either on center or five thou below. Um, yeah, and if you're like any at all below, it's probably going to leave a pretty good size nub on the end of what you're trying to part off. But uh, that could be ground off later. If you're above, it's just really not going to work. Probably end up damaging your part off blade. So this uh, nearly concludes this video. Um, it's going to tool change and it's going to do some threading, but uh, I'm not going to video the entire threading because watching this machine thread is like watching paint dry. <laughs> it's very slow. Um, I only can go about 2,000 per pass. Um, just because on your manual machine you have a connection between the spindle and your lead screw by uh, gears. But on this, we don't. We have two separate motors. Um, one for the spindle and one for the saddle here, moving back and forth. Um, so if you push too hard, the spindle's gonna slow down and the saddle's not, and you're gonna get a crappy thread. This machine will do it. You just have to be super gentle. Um, I'll say a few words about my threading tool though. I just took a piece of high speed steel and ground it. It's a piece of half inch. If you're grinding high speed steel into any tool, you can expect it's going to take a long time. Uh, you're going to have to continuously quench the tool in water. 
Um, don't push so hard that it goes brown, or worse, blue. If it's a little bit browned, um, I've read on the internet that it doesn't affect tool life, but uh, I just don't let it do it. Um, because it's definitely better if you don't. Um, once it goes blue or brown, you're starting to change the temper, almost anneal the tool steel, and uh, it won't be as sharp, won't keep cutting edge as long. Okay, well I'm going to wrap it up. This video is getting sort of long. Um, thanks for watching, and uh, yeah, I'll post more later.